What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to add a text field to an alert for your app. So here's the app we're going to put together. We're going to hit this button and we see something which is awfully familiar to what Apple uses when you try to download something from the app store and you're not signed in. Basically, it's this alert. We've got two text fields in here. Of course, we can enter stuff into here and our super secret password. We'll also talk about reading the values after you go ahead and, you know, enter something in here and of course this works really nice in light mode dark mode we'll talk about how to configure these fields you see this one here is a secure field and this one is formatted for email addresses so on and so forth so if that sounds good to you make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the youtube algorithm if you're into ios hit subscribe while you're at it that all said let's get into the video all right let's begin by opening up xcode and creating a new project we're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and call this project field in uh, alert. And let's go ahead and make sure our language is Swift. Our lifecycle here, we can update to UI kit and we're gonna be working in UI kit. So let's change our interface here to be storyboard even though we will work programmatically. So go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, we are going to, as soon as Xcode loads, close this right panel here. I'm gonna go ahead and expand the Xcode window. We'll jump into our view controller. Let's go ahead and pick a simulator here that we wanna run on. Maybe we'll go with the 12 Pro Max. Go ahead and bump up the font size, or let me bump up the font size so we all can see it. And let's go ahead and give our app a run in the simulator. So. Here is our app, it is completely empty as expected. Let's get into creating this alert and adding fields into it. So when we wanna show the alert, we wanna, we wanna have some action to actually show it. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'm just gonna create a button here at the bottom of view to load. And basically we'll tap on this button, that's gonna give us the alert. So let's go ahead and say it's 200 wide by 50 tall. And we'll go ahead and add this as a sub view here, just like that. Let's go ahead and give it a background color of maybe system, system blue perhaps. And we'll also go ahead and give it uh, perhaps a title because that's slightly important. So we'll say set title, show alert. And we'll go ahead and say it's for normal. And we also want the button to be centered in the view just like that. And we also want to set the color of the uh, title. So let's go ahead and do that, give the app a run, and we should now have a blue button in the center of our uh, view here, which in fact we do. The next thing we want to do is actually get into the meat of the alert. So I'm going to create a objective C selector here, and this is going to be called show alert. And basically we're going to hook up this button to that method by saying at target self, the selector will be show alert and the event will be touch up inside. So how do we actually show an alert and more importantly, add text fields to it? So Creating an alert is pretty vanilla in UI kit. It's gonna be the same as you normally expect if you're familiar. So we're gonna use a UI alert controller and we're gonna use a title message and a preferred style, which is going to be alert. Now, in terms of the title and message here, I'm gonna go ahead and use basically what Apple uses when they ask you to sign into your Apple account. So I'm gonna go ahead and say sign in with Apple ID, please sign in to your account to continue. So looking pretty good. Now we wanna present the actual alert. So since it's nothing more than just a controller, we can just use it like that. And we wanna add two buttons to it. And we'll also want to add our two fields to it for our username, which is our email actually, and our password. So this is the main thing we'll focus on, but let's go ahead and add those buttons first. So adding a button or an action, as they call it, is pretty trivial. We're gonna say alert, add action, UI alert action with a title. And the first one is going to be cancel, and its style will be cancel, and the handler is going to just be nil. And we can go ahead and copy and paste this and just change it up. So this one, we'll go ahead and say continue, the style, whoops, style will be default, and the handler will actually be a closure. 
like that. And basically in here, we would uh, need to read text field values. So let's go ahead and give this a run and make sure our actual alert is showing up. And then we'll take a look at adding the fields. So cool, we've got our text field showing up, no text, uh, rather we've got our alert showing up, no text fields showing up in here quite yet because we haven't added them. So let's work on actually adding them. So it's pretty trivial to add them, but stick with me because reading the actual values can be a, a tad tricky. So to add the fields, what we want to go ahead and simply do is say add text fields. And one thing I'll call out is when you just type in add, you can see there's actually a couple um, APIs available on here to, you know, add other things that aren't text fields like actions and observers and stuff. So just be careful that you pick the correct method here. You want to add a text field and you can actually pass in a uh, UI text field uh, configuration here. Rather, there is a configuration handler, I should say. So this configuration handler actually brings in the field. And what you're able to do in here is take the field and configure it. So we're going to say assign the placeholder. So we'll say maybe this first one is email address. We can maybe even say uh, field dot return key type. You can go ahead and say this is next field dot keyboard type. We can go ahead and say is an email address, so on and so forth. I'm not going to bore you all with uh, all the different functions, but uh, you know, you can configure a field as you would with any other type of text field. The next one is going to be the password field. We can just keep it like this and call this one a password. And let's see, we want this to be uh, done or maybe continue. And the type here is going to be a password field, which it does not have a dedicated type. So we'll leave it as such. And let's see, we are going to say is secure text entry to true. So it shows us asterisks in the field as we type because it is indeed a password. And that's really it. That's how you had add the field. So if we go ahead and give it a run, you'll see the fields there now. And then we'll next work on reading the actual uh, information out of the field. So if you go ahead and hit the button, you'll start to see this, which looks uh, awfully familiar or it should look awfully familiar to basically uh, what Apple uses when they want you to sign into your own Apple ID uh, or your you know App Store account when you're downloading an app or something. So this is actually exactly what they are doing internally to do that. So if I go in here and I type in you know a email address, I can say uh, hello at iosacademy.io and my password is probably password. When I go ahead and tap on continue, you know, it disappears, but we don't actually know what those values are. So we need to read them out somehow. So how do we read them out? Well, it's pretty simple. So in our case, we're going to read them out and I'm going to go ahead and print them to the console. And we'll go ahead and let me just open up the console down here. But basically what you are able to do is you're able to say your fields are the alert dot text fields, which gives you an array of text fields. And this is optional by default, so we are going to unwrap it. And then we also want to validate that we have uh, two of these fields before we try to access both of them. Because if we don't have two and we try to call, you know, the element at the uh, index one, it's going to crash, right? So let's go ahead and pull out those fields. So we can go ahead and say the email field is from fields, the first element, and the password field is from fields array, the second element. And once we've gone ahead and done that, we can start getting the actual text out. So I'm going to go ahead and say your email is email field dot text. Keep in mind, text is an optional property on a field, which is why we need to unwrap it. We're also going to go ahead and validate that the email is not empty. And we need we want to do uh, both of these operations for the password as well. So we'll go ahead and say our password is going to be our password field dot uh, text. Uh, and this one will be our password uh, is empty. And if we uh, you know go ahead and uh, any of these cases are you know not valid, we'll go ahead and just return. And maybe I'll also go ahead and print uh, invalid entries. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and print out your email is email and you should never print out a password. But for the purposes of today's video, we're going to say password is password. 
So that's basically how you would use um, the API here to actually get the value out of the fields. It's fairly straightforward, um, but what's really nice about this is if you want to build like a quick way to capture some input from the user, this is a really good way to do so. You don't have to create your own forms. It's pretty baked into UI kit and it's pretty easy to set up. So let's say you wanted to go ahead and make like a network call or anything. You can do that right in here once you've grabbed the values. So let's go ahead and give this a run and uh, let's see what we end up with. All right, so we've got our button. I'm going to go ahead and tap on it. If you don't have the keyboard, by the way, showing up in the simulator, you can hit Command K, which just uh, shows and hides the software keyboard um, because you're you know, connected with your MacBook's keyboard or your iMac's keyboard. But let's go ahead and type something in here. We'll say hello at iosacademy.io. And let's pick a super secret password. Maybe we'll call it password. And I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And in the left here, you see we've got our email as well as our password. Let's go ahead and try to just uh, go ahead and add some junk in here. And we'll keep password empty. And we'll go ahead and tap on this. And we'll see that we've got uh, invalid entries, which is referring to the fact that the password was empty. Um, in this case, the email will be empty and we'll still get that invalid uh, entries. So there you have it. That's how you can go about actually uh, setting up your uh, alert with text fields. Now you can have more than two buttons here. Let's say you wanted to have a third button to allow the user to reset their password. You know, if they have forgotten, maybe you want face ID support, you can do that. It's still just an alert under the hood. Uh, with just the added kind of fanciness of a text field inside of it with a managed keyboard experience. Of course, it looks really good in light mode. It looks really good in dark mode since it's a system component. And yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Super short and sweet video. If you found it helpful and useful and haven't done so already, don't forget to smash the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS, Swift, SwiftUI. I try to post daily on this channel. If you enjoy my teaching style, I've got many of my uh, own courses now at iosacademy.io slash courses. I've got some free stuff over on Skillshare as well. Take a look at some of my prior videos. And don't hesitate to comment down below if you have any questions, video suggestions, or feedback. Always love hearing from you guys. And I try to reply within a reasonable amount of time to all comments. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.